So imagine that we take a vertical axis of revolution and an infinitesimal horizontal rectangle that is 1, perpendicular to the axis of revolution, and 2, that is slightly away from the axis of revolution. The width of our rectangle is a small change along the y-axis, so the width of course is given by dy, and now imagine that we are revolving this rectangle about the axis of revolution. Well, it will generate essentially a small disk where the center is missing. Once again, the center of our solid is the axis of revolution. And as before, we are interested in the volume of this little solid, which we call a washer. So a washer is nothing but a disk where the center is missing. So how do we find the volume of this washer? Well, just ask for a disk. We need the area of the surface of our washer times the height, the thickness of the washer. Well, we already have this. The thickness of our washer is the width of the rectangle, given here by dy. And how do we find the surface area of the washer? Well, if you look at it this way, it's quite simple. You can find the area of the larger circle and then subtract the area of the smaller circle. So therefore, you need the radius of the small circle and the radius of the larger circle. So here's the radius, lowercase r, of the smaller circle and here's the radius, uppercase r, of the larger circle. And now let's look at what do these two correspond in the initial picture. The small radius is the distance from the center of the washer to the first end point of the rectangle the center of our washer is of course the axis of revolution, so clearly this little segment here is the small radius. And the larger radius, again starting from the center of the washer to the other end point of the rectangle. So once we find the length of these two horizontal segments, then we're essentially done. The volume of our washer as we've said will be given by the surface area of the washer, so the area of the larger circle by uppercase r squared minus the area of the smaller circle by lowercase r squared. So this leaves us with the surface area of our washer times, of course, the thickness of the washer, and we have now the volume of this little solid. One simplification, we can factor pi from the expression, and so the volume is simply pi times the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared times dy. So just as a disk where the center is missing. So think of it as volume of the larger disk minus the volume of the smaller disk. And of course we can reproduce this if the axis is not vertical but horizontal. Now we take a small infinitesimal rectangle that is perpendicular to and away from the axis of revolution. So once again we have the smaller radius, we have the larger radius, and the width of our rectangle now is a small change along the x-axis, therefore given by dx. 
And once again, we revolve the rectangle about the axis of revolution. So it creates, again, a washer, but now standing up. And the volume, just as before, so we have, if we extend here both endpoints of our rectangle, the smaller radius for the smaller circle and the larger radius for the larger circle. The thickness of our washer is now dx. And so the volume of this other washer is of course the surface area of the washer, so the area of the larger circle by r squared, but now we have too much, we have to remove the area of the smaller inner circle by lowercase r squared. This is now the surface area of the washer times of course the thickness, now dx, and just as before, we can simplify by factoring pi out of the expression, and we're left with the larger radius squared minus a smaller radius squared dx. And this is how you can find the volume of a little washer obtained by revolving a rectangle that is perpendicular to an axis of revolution but doesn't touch the axis, is slightly away from the axis, and the result is essentially the same whether the axis is vertical or horizontal. And that's it.